Is there something that the market is missing in your numbers? Because the numbers, as we showed them, seem to be pretty big. Yeah, thanks, Brian, for having me. You're right. We showed really, really nice uh, growth numbers. So it's a second quarter in a row that we are upgrading uh, this uh, this year. So very, very strong underlying performance based on the stats you uh, you alluded to. You also uh, mentioned our big uh, presence in obesity, and uh, we have a very uh, efficacious product uh, now on the market in the U.S. Uh, we go we that we are ramping up. So we guided that. Uh, we have had some supply issues that we are now coming back with all those strengths available uh, towards the end of the year and not later than what the market had expected. And then we also guided that uh, a very important uh, you know, study uh, on cardiovascular safety and uh, benefit actually is reading out next year. And there's been some uh, speculations whether there could be an interim readout for both topics, the supply uh, challenge and the, the readout on the, on the CV benefit. We feel very confident that we have a good grip on this, that we will be back with full supply, and we also feel that we will show a CV benefit when we have the full uh, trial readout. So we're actually very confident and very positive about the continued growth outlook for Novo Nordisk, both in diabetes but also in obesity. You know, and, and we, as I was as I was writing and prepping that that RBI that you did, random but interesting segment just ahead of you, Lars, on this, we know that diabetes and obesity is a crisis here and around the world. But I honestly didn't realize just how big it was until I started diving into some of the stats for that segment. I mean, a hundred million Americans, one third of the nation, including children, may have some kind of pre-diabetes. One in ten with diabetes, most of that is type 2. A lot of that is lifestyle related, not my opinion. That is the CDC and other medical experts. Um, what can Novo Nordisk do? What kind of treatments and drugs are, are available? How much more can we do on this fight? You're right that this is uh, an alarming trend. We see that every decade globally, we add another 100 million people living with diabetes. And you can say the same for obesity. So our physiology has not changed a lot over the past centuries, but the way we live and uh, we, you know, what we eat and our activity level has changed a lot. So it takes, you can say, prevention efforts, which is really, really difficult because changing personal uh, preferences and lifestyle is difficult. But you know, there is a prevention agenda. But more importantly, it's about having efficacious medicines. And right now, the growth we see in Novo Nordisk is based on this GLP-1-based portfolio of products that's both uh, launched to help people living uh, better with type 2 diabetes, but now also picking up significantly in the obesity uh, category. And you can say if we succeed in addressing obesity, we're actually mitigating to some degree type 2 diabetes because obesity is a leading cause of type 2 diabetes. So we think it's very meaningful that we make intervention with anti-obesity medicines because thereby we also address the diabetes uh, pandemic. What, is the, what does the drug do to treat obesity, Lars? How does it work? So it's, it's simplistically uh, explained, it reduces the appetite. So you have a feeling of being more full, so you simply end up taking less energy in, and that leads to a weight loss. We have in our development efforts uh, a soon to start phase three program on a combination with another mo molecule that accelerates energy expenditure. So if you can both reduce energy intake and accelerate energy expenditure, we believe we can get to even higher weight loss than what we see with our latest uh, innovation. So it's really the anti-obesity market is really a new market, as you alluded to in your, in your opening, massive number, you know, more than 100 million Americans. That has been the case for long, uh -huh. but it's, it's first now we see really efficacious medicines. And I'm really proud that after more than 20 years of research and development efforts in this, we now have really efficacious, safe medicines that has seen a tremendous success and initial uptake in the U.S. market. So that holds well for our ability to actually prevent uh, type 2 di diabetes yeah. that we deal with the underlying cause being obesity. L Lars, this is a little bit... Uh Separate topic, but I was just in Europe. I've been I've been talking a lot for nearly a year now about Europe's growing energy crisis. I understand you're in Denmark. It's kind of a unique situation. You're not in Germany. You're not in the UK where they're having more serious issues. 
And you're not a manufacturer necessarily of like steel, but you are a manufacturer of pharmaceuticals. It's an energy intensive industry in its own way. How are you guys managing through some of the energy issues that are facing all of Europe right now? It's a really important point. You can say all of Europe somehow is impacted by the lower supply of natural gas coming from Russia. If you take Novo Nordisk, we have actually been on a green transmission uh, transformation for, for long. So already last year, we had all our global manufacturing operations running on green energy. So not relying on, on fossil fuel like natural gas. So if you take in Denmark, uh, our biggest, you know, really large site uh, producing majority of all uh, the, the world's uh, bulk insulin, that's actually running on green electricity and biogas. So we are relatively well protected as a company, but of course we also have vendors, suppliers bringing important uh, products to us mm -hmm. that are relying on, on natural gas. So all of these companies are building redundancies and resilience and backup supply. Uh, so that's a big theme in Europe right now uh, to prepare for that for the winter.